here's another conspiracy. Ugh, you guys, it's exhausting. Aren't you exhausted? Anyone to go and have like a slew of medical issues. Like I, I don't think this type of speculation is healthy. Speculating someone's health, like I'm, you guys confused? Imagine how I was feeling. Somewhere much Anyway. I'm just terribly bored with all the speculation. And at the time, none of it's true. Stay mad. Here's another conspiracy. Ugh, you guys, it's exhausting. Aren't you exhausted? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Aren't You Exhausted, the podcast. I am your host, Ashley, and I'm joined by my husband, Liam, once again. Lovely husband, that's me. And uh, yeah, I'm here and uh, I'm excited to talk about this. Of course, the first episode had some issues, so we're here re-recording. Yes, we had some audio issues from this episode where Liam's audio kind of cut out midway. So we're just re-recording the whole thing. So you may get some new commentary added on as we go through because his commentary is not edited as much as mine. And even I improvise on my script. So Mine is all off the cuff. So. <laughs> yeah, his is all off the cuff. It's wild, baby. <laughs> so we're going to start with Amber only because her content is kind of the least inventive of the two. And since last episode, Amber has posted three new vlogs. Well, actually, since now, I think she's got four up now um, to her channel. Not really consistent in her uploads, but I know she had previously stated how she wasn't necessarily keeping a schedule anymore. Um, Amber Lynn has claimed in the vlog post titled Exaggerating Food Issues Going to a Different Program? Question and horrible storms that through her exaggeration of eating disorders she has possibly ruined her future of having weight loss surgery i mean so because we've already talked about this my yeah. brain is like don't talk about it too much but i know like we have to give some context but i'll say this you know the whole ruining the eating disorder we you and i i think are on the boat same page where it wasn't like i ruined my chances of getting the surgery no you either subconsciously or consciously however you knew that saying telling your doctors this would ensure that you would not be able to get the surgery which yeah is her end goal to not change her life at all but and to be able now, to make content off of it right and now she's able to tell people like look i tried and and they told me it was unsafe but it's like yeah but you knew it was going to be on, you knew you had this disorder beforehand and you're telling everybody that you're cured, but then lo and behold, you're apparently not cured when you're about to have surgery for it. So, you know, make up your mind. It's one yeah. or the other. And then, I mean, she did, she didn't, I, I could have swore that she claimed in her vlog before this, that she didn't know where people were getting that she was denied weight loss surgery. Or the possibility of her giving up on having it. Because a lot of the uh, verbiage that she used was very a defeatist attitude towards the requirements of the program. And looking for um, kind of alternatives to trick into getting the surgery faster. And that's where I think a lot of her audience started to take issue. Because she doesn't follow through with a program. And this is supposedly staff that she's comfortable with and likes. But she's not willing to wait a year of not binging to accomplish what they seek out for her, which is in her best interest. Um, yeah. She wants to go to another bariatric team and lie about her disordered eating so that she's able to have this major surgery that there are no guarantees that she will even wake up on the other side of due to her size and health condition. So, I mean, I... Sorry, she wants to play this game of doctor shopping to be able to get what she wants on her timeline. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's going to be the same situation. Like, she's going to find a doctor that's going to agree to it, if she does. Let's yeah. just say she does. And then she's going to find a way to, you know, let them know that she has binging disorder or whatever. And then the doctors are going to say no, because... No one wants to deal with that. Like, you know, it's obviously unsafe. And most doctors, you know, they're not looking to put their patients in harm's way. So I'm just, it's baffling, really, 
you know, she she creates this narrative, and he, I understand. I understand her her point of view where she's like, well, you know, now it look, makes it look like I'm trying, so people can't say that I I'm all talk. But you know, she has not earned the she's not earned her audience's trust on this, and so yeah. Like, the go-to feeling is she did this purpose and she's never going to get this surgery. She's going to find ways to avoid it. I mean, we've talked about this. I don't know if we talked about this on the last podcast or if it was cut from the, the, the previous version of this episode, we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, inpatient. And I think we yeah. both are in agreement that that's really the best route for her to take. Yeah. That's one thing I will, say till I'm blue in the face about Amber Lynn, I think inpatient care will be the only thing that actually works for her because it's forcing her to restrict her portion sizes. It's forcing her to look at nutrition a little more closely and it will be in a uh, observed place. Like she's going to have physicians and healthcare workers there to help her along the way to make sure that it stays a healthy process. But she doesn't want to give up that kind of control. She still feels that she can do this herself, but she just needs that magic pill. And that magic pill is weight loss surgery. Yeah, I don't know, like, where she gets the idea that she can do this herself. She's 30-something years old, right? Or 32. 30. She's 32. 32 years old, and she hasn't done it yet on herself, by yeah. herself. She's almost... 600, 700 pounds. I don't know how much. but Well, I, she hasn't done a recent weigh-in. The way in that the last way in she did, she was like four hundred and ninety something pounds. But her latest vlog that she uploaded here recently, um, she was stating how people were calling her out for looking like she's gained weight again because her face is right. swollen and she claims that it's her lipedema, lymphedema that is causing her to retain water and not like holding her diet accountable at all. And then she's brought back in drinking uh, soda. So she was supposed to have cut this out to ready herself for weight loss surgery because it's something she can't have immediately after the surgery. So she was just going to cut it out altogether. It's healthier for her to cut it out. But then goes and buys uh, Sonic Ice and puts a, a can of Coke in the Sonic Ice that she had Ubered. Which is just a ridiculous, like, how privileged are you to be able to have that kind of money to just throw on Sonic Eyes? You know, it's not even about privilege. It's about how fucking lazy are you? Yeah. (laughs) Like, like, yes, you know, she she has enough money to do that, but her only real expense is food. And And honestly, if she would have been smart, it wouldn't even have looked bad if she would have just you can order a whole bag of Sonic ice from Sonic. You can request it. What did she like, get? Like a cup of ice? She just got a cup of Sonic ice delivered to her. I don't understand. Is there something special about Sonic ice? Yeah, Sonic ice is top tier. Uh, no, but you can more. buy a whole bag of it from <laughs> Sonic. Like they offer it. So all she would have had to have done was go to Sonic. Is it flavored ice? No, it's just ice. It's like little ice nuggets. They're the best though. Like. Is it like the one we get at the gas station? No, 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 no. No, it's, it's not. Anyway, like Thornton. this is not the ice pod. No, this is not the ice pod. <laughs> but that's your, that's your other podcast. Yeah. Um. Um. But the fact that like she's bringing this back in, so we know her sodium intake is right back up there, and she probably ordered fast food from Sonic because who just orders just ice? I mean. Granted, we're talking about Amber Lynn, but right, like she's... obviously, food was. Also ordered. Yeah, how did she, you? I don't. I don't see her going on Sonic and being and seeing all the food on there and saying no, no, no. Just no, ice, just please. gonna get ice, and we're gonna have it Ubered and have to spend right. at least five dollars on a tip for this person. Yeah. To bring us <laughs> anyway. Ice. Anyhow. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, we could talk to her blue in the face about Amber, but at the end of the day, you know, it's like I said in the beginning, she's never gonna change, and she's never gonna get this surgery. And it's all just to, it is all just to prove to her, pe- the, you know, the people viewing her in her mind that she has like some sort of argument where she's like, oh, I tried to get the surgery, but it's like, yeah. But, but did you really? 
but you haven't tried to lose weight. So congratulations. You tried to, you tried a quick fix, but it is not like medically safe for you to do this quick fix. So you're not really trying to lose weight. Also, I want to bring up this thing that she's had ongoing in the, uh, the commentary that's happened on her Instagram uh, Q&As. Uh, and I think even in her comment section when she brought up that she had OCD against uh, tap water. But the fact that her ice that she's getting from Sonic is made with tap water. The, the fountain drinks that she gets are made with tap water. Like, the math ain't mathin' just, for just not liking tap OCD water. OCD about tap water? She refuses to drink water from the tap. Like, even I if it had a Brita filter. Uses, I assume she's the one who uses the term OCD. Yes. Okay, because that's not OCD. That's just, she doesn't like tap water. There's, it does, it, just because you don't like something, it doesn't mean it's OCD. Yeah. It just means she doesn't well, like she tap claims, water. I also don't she like She claims water. it's a, it's a, like, unreasonable thing, like her not liking tap water. No, she no. claims that there's more than that. thing. An unreasonable thing. No, that's just being stupid. An unreasonable <laughs> thing would be she wouldn't eat ice or she would never like drink any water uh, that she wasn't 100 sure of but yeah ice is not they don't fucking take purified water and make ice out of it no <laughs> they take the cheapest nastiest water and make ice out of it it's That's just tap, tap wa water i mean tap water isn't inherently nasty it depends on where you're from how well I mean, it's geez, filtered geez, geez. but people are offering to buy her a brita filter for her faucet so that the water is drinkable because some areas it's not. Some areas it's, like, Look, nasty. And she still refuses to. If, if I had a Brita filter, Sonic I would drink ice, it out of our faucet. If she's getting Sonic Ice delivered, she can get a bottle of water delivered. It's because <laughs> she wants to drink soda. It's not about water. Yeah. Like, once you get Sonic Ice delivered, <laughs> your excuse of it's just not convenient goes right out the fucking window. Also, why because wouldn't she just order a soda with the ice in it? If she was just going to put soda in it from home, because probably if you're going to spend that money, of ice. if you're going to spend that money, you might as well order something of substance. I don't know. Yeah, it's just she, so maybe weird. She, maybe she thinks the Coke is made with tap water. It's just, I don't get rich people sometimes. And like, I mean, she's, she's not, not she's not like, she's just uber rich, but she's got enough money to where this isn't an issue. Whereas like, there's people out there fucking struggling for groceries and she's out here just i'm gonna buy sonic ice for my soda i mean it's it's a hell of a luxury i guess yeah it's an interesting choice to <laughs> i don't know it's weird but anyway amber not getting the surgery i guess we'll check in this yeah is, this is amber watch 2023 <laughs> we'll see what happens this year um nothing. but now on to nothing. Chantal. Uh, because she's a hot mess. Um, she had a few live streams and pre-recorded content uh, posted to her main channel. Though I'm not really sure why she uploaded her pre-recorded stuff to her main channel. When it was something that would probably be better suited to her couple's channel. As it's right. surrounding like food and travel. And that's what that channel is supposed to be about. <laughs> but anyhow... Earlier in the week, Chantel posted a pre-recorded video discussing her care in Kuwait, like the health care, because she went to a clinic to be treated for some breathing issues that she was having, and she felt like she had the flu or COVID. And it turns out she didn't have COVID, and they felt it was a mixture of her asthma and possible respiratory issues brought on by the change of environment and temperature. So possibly allergies. <laughs> We've seen it. I have bad allergies when temperature changes. So like. It feels like you're, it feels like shit. Like, no, like, it's understandable. You yeah. know, the year, yeah, yeah, it's understandable. There's and in the recent live streams and pre recorded content of hers, it seems like the heat's really getting to her a bit. She's never been out there during the summer. So yeah, this will be her first summer out there and it's going to get really hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cause she's from Canada where it's, you know, you know, like, kind of like our weather. Northern. It's, it's a little bit colder, though. Oh, Canada? Yeah. Oh, no, Canada's way cooler than it is. Well, I'm thinking Ohio, because that's where my brain goes back to. Well, I have bad news for you. 
But anyway, but yes, yes. If you were talking about Ohio, then yes, yeah. it's similar to that kind of northern weather where, you know, it's kind of the colds are really have, cold, and then right, the summer's like your, okay. You have your, you have your season. Yeah. yeah. In uh, wherever she's is now, Kuwait is the middle. Yeah, it's the Middle East. You never yeah. see scenes of the, You never see the Middle East with snow. It's always desert and. Well, I, I, like the summers are supposed to get in like the hundreds, one hundred and twenties out there. So, yeah, I mean, not it's, fat it's girl desert. weather. <laughs> it's desert area. Yeah, like it's, it's it's tough. And uh, we kind of see the heat getting to her a bit because she's seen like her face is glistening, her cheeks and her chin are flushed. It looks like she probably has elevated blood pressure due to the heat and mainlining of fried foods and Pepsi. Like this girl drinks liters of Pepsi at a, each each meal. So, like, it reminds me of my mom, honestly. <laughs> Sweet memories. But yeah. <laughs> due to her views and engagement dropping on YouTube, Chantel thought it would be good to take to TikTok, where she thought she would have a clean slate and a new avenue for earning income. And she has been posting topics brought up by TikTokers about her animal abuse and discussing classic about her relationship, but not mentioning the full truths of each of the matters, which she always spins this narrative that she wasn't a neglectful pet parent because she offered to take the cat to the vet before rehoming them. But I think that was a little too late. Like she knew the cat had issues with the paws, it wasn't the first time the cat has had issues with its paws. It was an elderly cat. It probably needed a little bit more vet care, especially towards right. this era of its life. And she waited until last minute to offer to take it to the vet when she'd been home for almost a month. I mean, so, the biggest issue, and similar with Amber Lynn, is, you know, they share so much about their lives because... In all honesty, they're not interesting, and so they have to, like, yeah. content. But then, you know, then that opens them up for people to discuss their lives. And, you know, if she had just not mentioned the cat. Yeah, totally. Like, if she would have never mentioned anything about what was going on. I mean, people saw that the cats weren't being treated the best because she was showing in the live streams right, the environment. People, and when people asked what happened to the cat, she could have said, oh, I had to, you know. I wasn't able I had to, to rehome one. them I or rehome it. Yeah. Like, and people could have like, you know, pressed her, but in reality, she would have had the, she would have had the right to say, I rehomed it. I'm not really sure like what you want from me. Yeah. But and honestly, now, she did the same thing that she is berating FFG for. She profited off of her cats, like <laughs> being rehomed and like well, yeah, things leading up to it. Content with it. Yeah. And now she's berating this person that took her cat in for the same things. Do I think the methods were as great to obtain the cat? No. But at the end of the day, they saved that cat because Chantel was just going to put it down. Yeah, and this I mean, cat's doing this. pretty well now. We've talked about this. Uh, at the end of the day, yes, the cat is being uh, obviously much more cared yeah. for. So. Like, I'm not a fan of <laughs> many of the reactors out there. Especially the ones that go in like super hard on these people for every little detail. I'm more focused on the broad spectrum of things that are happening. But still, I will say what what was happening in this matter that was more of, of more importance, which was the cat was saved. It's got right. a better life now. So uh, I know I got I've gotten flack for that on TikTok as of recently, just for taking up for the fact like. Things within the community are kind of messy. Um, let's see. Chantel also had uh, a live stream discussing her fallout with Missy Moo. Now, I know you don't really know much about um, Chantel's, like, VIBs and, like, the, her members, her tight-knit members that she had. But Missy Moo was, like, considered one of her number one fans, was really high up there on the VIB list talked to Chantel outside of YouTube. They had like a friendship and uh, this woman's husband was even interacting with Sala and like they were sharing a lot of personal details apparently and would talk outside of YouTube. <laughs> and yeah. Chantel got a little miffed that she found out that her closest supporter turned against her 
as quickly as she did with the news of BBJ being found out that he was, she was neglected. Sorry, he, she. Um, and Chantel feels like it's fully fabricated to make her look bad. Um, it's not. It's just an observance. Like, right. you got to take accountability for your actions at some point. Uh, though she's shown evidence throughout her content throughout the years of how these cats lived. So even if we were to go based off of that alone, we know she's not the best parent. Right. And it wasn't even the first time that she's been willing to give the cats up. She was willing to give them up for Nodder just a few years before, only knowing him a short amount of time. She was wanting to move in with him and get rid of the cats. So well, look, she obviously does not care about the cats. Yeah. Yet, you know, the second that it becomes a... She wanted content off of it. She right. she's I mean it wasn't even about content off of it. It was you know, she had the cat and then when the cat no longer, you know, benefited her or, you know, she got bored of it, it became just another thing that she dealt with. But then, you know, people called her out on it and then, you know, obviously this whole thing and then all of a sudden she cares about this cat and she's offended and she wants it back. Yeah. But, you know, look we talked about the cat, obviously, uh, I think like two weeks ago or something. Yeah. And it's it's a whole... Well, re- it, it wouldn't even be an ongoing thing if Chantel wouldn't keep on bringing it up during her live streams, like shitting on people for questioning her animal neglect. They just want her to, like, realize I mean, yeah, what she did was wrong. No, I mean, I think some of them want her to realize... Which is wrong, but I think some people are just there to give her shit. And you know what? Like, sorry. it's the internet. It happens. But no, I mean, look, she deserves it. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm she sorry. does. You, you treated your cat like shit. You shouldn't have fucking advertised it. You, you did it on a just... public outlet where everybody right, could see. Like, not talk this about is it. the this is the consequences of your actions. Yeah, I should just not talked about it if, if <laughs> you didn't want to deal with it or deal with people reacting. It's amazing to me that you know. She's been doing this for however long. Amber's been doing this for however long. Yet they are always still surprised when people like react to things they say and do. Yeah, and think they would learn, but well, they always she- play dumb too. They act like they never said it in that way, or people are twisting their words. No, we're taking your words exactly how you said them. That's the, that's the problem. There, people are listening to what they're saying, and they're. They're still surprised that people are listening to what they're saying. (laughs) I mean, they have fairly big audiences. Like, how do you think no one's going to listen to what you're talking about and put two and two together? Like, Amber has, like, almost 250,000 followers. I think she's at, like, 214 right now. And Chantel's at, like, 92.5, 92.6 in there. So, like, they have fairly big followings. Like, how do you think this isn't going to happen? Yeah, it only takes one or two people to be, like, you know, you know, uh, not obsessed is the wrong word, but, uh, you know, to, to like, know all of your content for them to be able to call you out and shit. It only takes, like, one or two people, and then they can just tell, you know, explain to other people, hey, here's the receipts from all the shit you said. And, you know, they wouldn't get such a bad rap on people bringing it to their attention if they would just take accountability for it, address it, and move on. But instead, they sit there and try gaslighting their audience or trolling their audience for the reaction and get upset with the reaction that they get in return. And it's like... Well, it's never good to troll your audience because I tell you right now, your audience is... They have way more time on their hands than you do. Even Amber Lynn. Like, you think Amber Lynn is like, sitting around at home doing nothing all day like imagine these people that like also have nothing to do all day except for give you shit like yeah they they got time on their hands so (laughs) it's it's best to just i mean that's why if you're gonna do content on the internet i always think it's better to just make content and and like be able to handle constructive criticism if people are criticizing something that you've said like address it like is it something you said that was wrong or do you feel justified in what you said and like state why you feel justified in what you said and have an actual 
rebuttal of it instead of just being like, well, you look ugly or (laughs) your family, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to dox you. I mean, you're always going to do with crazy people and stuff like that. That's why, like, I way prefer, like, content creators who just make content, whether it's, like, a video or even, like, streaming a video game is, you know, it opens itself up, opens yourself up to kind of having to deal with shit. But I feel like if you're really wanting to have your personality and your personal life be your content, you really got to, like, think about what you're going to say because if there's things that you want to hide, you better make that decision. Yeah. Not just like you can't retroactively decide you don't want people to talk about your shit. Yeah. You have to like I think people are allowed their privacy. I do. And I think Chantal is allowed her privacy. But you can't you can't be allowed your privacy when you don't like the reaction after you've shown your shit. Like you're offering your life to the world or whatever you've done to these people. And then the reaction you get is not good, but to be fair, the the shit you're putting out there is not good. People, yeah. people are not going to react great to you you're treating your cat like shit. And you mm-hmm. can't be like, this is my business. It's like, bitch, you made it our business. Yeah. It's everybody's business when you put it in your videos or whatever it is. If you didn't want people to see how you treated your cat, you could have easily avoided it. No one even needed to know you had a cat. Yeah. You know, but look. We've talked about, I think I've talked about this since day one. My first thing I was saying was be aware of, you know, be aware of the consequences of putting yourself out there. And these are people that just, they're, they have, you know, when you start making content on the internet, usually in the beginning, you get mostly, I think, positive comments because the only people that are really going to be commenting on your stuff are people who are going to be positive about it. Because it doesn't really benefit people to talk shit on a video with like, you know, 200 views or something. But once you start getting more, more views, that's when you start having, you know, trolls and stuff come in because they want to attack you because they want to see a reaction. So I I get it. They may have been lulled in the false insecurity, but it's way past that. I mean, we're way past that. So. Uh, but Chantal my- has also kind of made bold claims in her community tab, which she is, she's posted a lot on there here as recently. <laughs> and uh, she claimed that she was going to debunk- be debunking the scam business her husband is a party to. Oh, yeah. Um, which I believe is all bravado because, like, she's going to provide anything that's incriminating to herself or their quote unquote business. Uh, the only proof I believe she's going to give is her word against everybody else that's reached out and say, did i got this how would he pay for this iphone how would he pay for this iphone if he didn't have a job how yeah how would he how, pay for it how i don't, I don't know. know why don't you tell us <laughs> <laughs> and it, this is this is a perfect example and i'm gonna put this out here right now if you don't have 100 percent solid proof that his business is not a scam and look it's possible i don't know it's it's a it's a you know, it is a different place than we live. Yeah. You know, Cash App and those kind of WhatsApp and stuff, that stuff is popular over there. That's how people do stuff. But it is also very popular for people to scam people over there. Yeah. You know? I mean, and and to be like in India and stuff, there's whole uh, businesses that are ran just on scamming people. Right. I mean, it's, so it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility that that's going on here. It's not even like a stereotype. It's just, look, that's the truth. And people scam people here, but it is very prevalent. It's almost treated like a business out there. Yeah. it's They like have a, actual oh, buildings, business right. buildings. It's like, it's like, oh, no problem with that. I'm a, an official scammer. So, yeah. And they do everything. They have the WhatsApp. They do the stuff because, you know, it's easy, it's harder to track. Yeah. But that being said, a lot of people over there, you know, it's easier to get a plan like that as opposed to having a phone plan and paying to contact people and paying, you know, overseas charges. So yeah. I'm not saying that it's impossible that his business is real. What I'm saying is if it's not real, she better make a video about it because the second she does, People They're gonna be gonna serious be, problems people for him. People are gonna be able to look into what she's saying, and like, she, if she just she should just be ignoring these comments. 
Yeah. Because right now, that's all it is. But the second she, like... Addresses it and brings... Addresses it and attention almost challenges to it. people yeah. to be like, prove me wrong. It's like, okay, now your shit's in trouble. Yeah. It's just like with the fucking cat. She could have easily just kind of swept it on the rug and not really talked about it and just said, yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. And people would have been like, okay, you know, whatever. It's kind of a diplomatic answer. But if you're going to challenge your audience, and especially the way that she acts with her audience, how rude she can be sometimes. And smug. Like, she is you're so gonna smug. You're going to really piss people off. Yeah. And then shit's going to go down. And I don't, I don't know if we have more, but I had something I wanted to talk about uh, at the end. So I don't know if you have more. Um, I have a little bit more, but go ahead. Oh, I just thought I was thinking, and it's a little bit late for this. Mm-hmm. But I thought, you know, it's still kind of early in the year. I wonder if you wanted to do predictions. Like yearly predictions for what you think both Amber and Chantal at the end of 2023 is going to look like. Um, How about we do that for the live stream? Hold a poll. Okay. Because I, I was just thinking about that and I'm like, you know, Amber, I don't see going anywhere. But I have a few theories where I think Chantal is going to end up at the end of this year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. It's not. It's not as. Uh, it's not prison or anything. It's not that no. sensational. But I do definitely think that Chantal will not be in the same place that she is now at the end of the year. And so it'd be. I think it'd be interesting for your podcast. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that for the uh, live stream. We can. We can do a poll. See what the rest of the people think of it as well, and then just put the stats up on the community post, okay. and then give our own kind of. Yeah. Uh, and then feelings. we can just talk okay. about it on the podcast after that. All right. I think it'd be something cool at the end of the year to be able to look at and say, this is what we thought and this is how right we were. I always love that for podcasts that do like, <laughs> really predictions. I listen to a wrestling podcast that does like, here's what I think is going to happen and, and then here's what I got right and wrong last time I made the prediction. So it's something that you can have people look forward to every year. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Okay, um, sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, Chantal, uh, as we know, is uh, has a pr- propensity for uh, lying. For the men she kind of romanticizes. Right. Uh, she did it with Nader. Like constantly lied about going back to him and seeing him or being with him somewhere. And she was always yeah. called out on it and then had to eventually fess up because like people were aware that they were in the same place. Um, but with Sala, she's not doing that as much. She's not admitting to anything. She's just kind of doubling down, which makes it even more worrisome that she's hiding things yeah because she's she's she has the knack for doubling down and if nobody can catch her in it which they're overseas so it's hard to not a lot of her audience is overseas so it's not like they can have access to the information that's needed i have a feeling and i might be right i might be wrong that the whole sala situation is more is like, and look, we saw videos of Nader, and we're, I mean, we don't have to go into it, but he is obviously kind of a freak. Mm-hmm. But I have a feeling that the whole Sala situation might be a little bit scarier than that, and especially because she's not home. So, like, he might have sat her down and told her, what's up? Yeah. Because he's probably smarter than her. Well, even that, like, Chantal has no problem something for but a guy she, she, because she's getting out of it what but, she wants and that's to right, but she also have the hot guy on her arm you know, it, it's one thing to be all hot shit in your house and be like i don't know what's going on but once you move to a different country like and you're trying to be hot shit like he's gonna tell he's mostly he's gonna tell her straight up to shut up because like if he's in the shit that's like gonna screw him over if it comes out or whatever it is yeah you know, he doesn't need people looking into him. I think that's why, why he, she's so... Why he, why he put himself in a situation with her, I don't know. But I think that she, even with the Nader situation, at the end of the day, she was in Canada, where she yeah. knows, you know, she could call the police on the guy. Yeah. In here, what can she do? Who even knows? Because is she even a fucking citizen? You know what I mean? Like, Are they even married? Are they even married? I'm gonna have to have. I'm gonna have to send you the the bubble tea, like talking about all of the different, um, not conspiracy theories, but she did a lot of research on some of the people and their chat and like their interactions, and has even chat logs of conversations had way before they got together that are 
questionable. <laughs> like there's a oh, really? yeah, there's like a dating service involved. Uh, like a lot of a lot of layers. I'll have to send you the links yeah, because yeah. I've been watching those. Okay. Um. Well, we could maybe we could react to it on stream. Yeah, we could. Um. And also, Chantel had the threat of like no longer posting on YouTube here recently, and like. It wasn't even like two or three days before uh, well, she was back on YouTube live streaming. You talked about her TikTok, but it, it went from I'm not going to post on YouTube anymore. I'm doing TikTok, made TikToks, turned off all the comments, right back to YouTube. Yeah, because people were she, calling her out on her shit. There's a load right. of people on there with a lot bigger following than she has. Also, TikTok, I mean, look, I'm somebody who knows that like your TikTok can get and look, it's nothing crazy, but look, I'll put this to TikTok for my stream, and it gets like 800 views. Yeah. And for someone like me who has zero following, imagine somebody who has a following, how easy it is for your shit to blow up. Like, at least yeah. YouTube, like, is much more kind of. And here's the thing I think TikTok has its problems. I'm not going to deny. I think people rely on it for news and stuff, and sometimes it's questionable. and whatever it is but i will say tiktok really does give everybody the opportunity to kind of just have a video kind of blow up yeah it's very there's more eyes on you over there than there is well i think there's their algorithm think... is different their, than youtube their algorithm i think is great because yeah. their algorithm really lets like you know people kind of just have a video and as long as it, it fits the tags yeah there's a small chance it's gonna show up on your shit and that's the thing about YouTube where it's like, YouTube's algorithm is very much designed of, this is what you like, here you go. I don't watch Chantal videos. I never see them. But the fact that I follow you on TikTok, just because I follow you, not because I watch like, your TikToks or whatever, I'll still get that shit. Just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. YouTube, it's like, I, I'm subscribed to you on YouTube, but I don't get to Chantal videos. You know what I mean? So, so it's much more... Uh, looser on tiktok yeah. so anybody who kind of is somewhat in the know who watches anything that has to do with them because look their weight loss their travel their you know drama the, drama. the so girl of world is like, on there that tags on there any of these things that people follow or are, watch a video on you have the chance of coming up and once you know if you see chantal on tiktok you know and you watch it the more you watch it the more it blows up yeah yeah blah blah, blah. It is. It's really like she's she's asking for a lot of new eyes. You know what's really funny? A and lot TikTok of her also is pretty rough in the comments as well. Yeah, a lot of her content, um, or a lot of her tags on TikTok are foodie beauty animal abuser. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> like if you pull she's that up, a load of videos come up, and it's like a videos more personal channel. No, well, it's tags from tiktok so right, but i'm saying she it's everybody that's talking that. about her oh i thought her tag i thought she tagged the video that no 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 and i'll be like she's really asking for it but <laughs> that's funny. um then she also brought up that people were accusing her of creating feeder content and like her one pre-recorded video where she was eating in a, a restaurant where they had like floor seating uh, she decided to put herself in a job of the hut pose <laughs> and was yeah, eating yeah. family portion, like family sized portions. We could easily feed like four adults at the very least. Yeah. Uh, and was shoveling they get, the they get food. Portions there. They yeah. Portions. She was shoveling the food into her mouth with the serving spoons, it looked like, before she went to her hands and was just letting the food just all fall down her face. Like. <laughs> I'm just like sitting there. If this isn't feeder content, this is just bad at like etiquette for eating. Like, what the I hell? Mean, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, what's his face is a feeder. He could be. I mean, you know, you never know. And then, uh, she like she claimed that she couldn't seat herself correctly on the floor, so she couldn't like sit normally. It was too uncomfortable for her because of her size. And I'm like, then why to go to a sit down restaurant like that? I know they're uh, prevalent there, but like there are other options, obviously. I mean, Sala probably has no idea what it's like to be like to, to be her size there. Right. You know, 
And it's going to get worse when it gets hotter because he's not going to be as affected by the heat as she yeah, is. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to start getting annoyed with her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about the predictions on the stream. I have yeah. predictions of where that relationship's going. And then, um, like, I can tell by the way that she does her thumbnails and, like, how she does set herself up. Like, it's done purposefully. And we're not, like, dumb that she has a feeder fan base out there. She did OnlyFans for a little while, and I'm pretty sure a lot of her content was her eating things while naked. So it's Ugh. either... <laughs> that is a weird combination. These people are either paying for that content through her memberships for the channel, or it's being money sent through a cash app for her. And that's probably yeah. how she was able to afford her iPhone 14. That she... She <laughs> wasn't her husband. <laughs> Sala miraculously came up with almost two grand to pay for. So they're living in a one bedroom place that's like not very nice area, yet can afford a two grand cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> so suspect. Sus well, sus. Very sus. Yeah. Um but I think that's gonna end it for tonight. We actually got through it. Yeah. Well, it only took us 45 tries. But High five. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so do you want to talk, do you want to announce like when you plan on doing the stream or do you not want to um, until you know yet? I wouldn't commit to anything until you're 100% sure. You don't want to end up like Amber or Chantal and promise something and then not deliver. Yeah. So I, I say we could probably do it post? tomorrow night. Well, let's not say tomorrow night because who knows what our plans are going to be like. So let's let's wait until... Let's wait and see how tomorrow plans out, and then we'll... we can do it. Su we can do it Sunday. I think Sunday would be a perfect day, except you don't want to do it because you got work the next day. Well, I, it's not even that because I do these during the week. So when I work, uh, we'll see. We'll see what Saturday brings and see what kind of okay. what our schedule looks like, and then keep I'll just put it on, on the community, community post. post. Yeah, yes, keep an eye on the community post. Uh. And then I also have uh, subscriber only episodes available. By a monthly subscription of only 99 cents. Uh, if you visit the link shown in the description below for the Spotify or Anchor uh, podcast app. Um, I do post all episodes to the apps. All the podcasting apps. But I also post like quote unquote bonus or subscriber only episodes that are only able to be accessed by a paid membership. So. It's something different. I do talk about different people on there, talk about different subjects. So it's worth checking out. So pay it, baby. <laughs> it's only 99 cents a month. If I could drop it any lower, I would. But I feel like it's a fair price and you'll get at least four episodes a month of different content than what I offer here. And it's probably about the same length. Um, anything else that you would like to say, Lee? No. Uh, if anybody's into gaming, follow my Twitch. But if you're not, don't worry about it. <laughs> Which I have his Twitch in the intro. So, the Twitch link I'm working on, I'm working is on below and in the intro. I need 20 more followers. <laughs> so. You'll get there. But I think that's going to end it. I hope you guys had a good night. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And we will see you at some point this weekend. For the live right. stream. That's right. We will. Or will we? We will. We will. All right. Have a good night. Bye.